meeting at the forbidden crossroads of discussion, this is where politics and religion intersect on the Sophie Scholl Society. I'm Mel McGinnis, and with me is Garrett Kang. And like I said, this is the time where we discuss those two forbidden subjects of religion and politics along the lines of what Sophie Scholl did in Nazi Germany with her and her friends as they discussed theology, philosophy, and said, we need to see how this will work out in the realm of the public square. And for them, they met the guillotine because of their views. We here in America can still share what our thoughts are and be able to express them freely, especially as a presidential election is approaching, not just presidential, but also congressional, Senate, House of Representatives, and other state and local offices. Garrett, as you're thinking about Tuesday, do you know who you're going to vote for for president? I do, Mel, and it's, uh, it's Joe Jorgensen and Spike Cohen of the Libertarian Party ticket. In New York, uh, since I live in New York, this wasn't that difficult of a decision. Um, New York has gone deep blue. Uh, since I've been able to vote, and even before that, Reagan was the last Republican president to carry New York State. And it's an all-or-nothing state, as most states, except for a handful, are. Whoever wins, regardless of the margin, gets all the electors for that state. Um, if I lived in Pennsylvania, I would definitely have to uh, do a little bit more prayer and, and soul-searching in, in respect to that, my vote for president. Um, in our party in New York, which I think is, it is the fastest growing party in the state, and we represent a lot of what the, the classic Republican and conservative parties, uh, before they got overly infected with progressivism, represented. Uh, smaller government, um, individual rights, property rights, uh, deregulation, and freedom of the market to do its thing um, uninterfered by, uh, by government. And I think we hold out or we represent um, hope for positive change locally and, and in the state, and we need the votes to maintain our ballot access since there were some recent changes by the Cuomo administration to make it harder for third parties to keep their ballot access, which is a big, um, uh, it makes it easier to run candidates locally and at the state level, and that's a huge advantage. If we, le if we lose that, it'll, it'll set us back quite a ways. So that influenced my decision. Um, Jorgensen is not my favorite candidate that's ever been run by the Libertarian Party. Uh, she has some flaws. Um, I didn't vote for her. I was a delegate to the National Convention. Um, but I think even with her flaws, I'm, I'm going to give them my support just to keep our momentum locally and in the state. It's interesting because I've thought twice about voting for Trump, given like what you say. We're here in New York State. It's deep blue already. And given the shenanigans from Albany to bump third party out of the New York scene of politics, I said, well, man, maybe I should consider trying that libertarian vote because mm -hmm. for our state, uh, I want that access to the ballot given to those third parties. Yeah. But I probably will end up voting for President Trump. Well, you're a member of the conservative yeah. party, Mel. Yeah. And I, I think you folks will get it. Uh, you know, you, you still need to get that third yeah, party thing, true. but you've essentially, since Pat Buchanan ran, have just rubber stamped the presidential or the Republican presidential candidate. Um, so as long as, and I think it, it usually does happen historically, you guys have met this new threshold the last, like, however many election cycles since Buchanan ran on, on your line. So I think you'll make it. it I would say if you're going to vote for Trump, vote for him on the conservative line <laughs> exactly. instead of the Republican line. Well, that's, what, that's what I um, typically do. I go conservative to let the Republicans know uh, we don't want uh, moderate uh, Republicans. Uh, we don't want neoconservative Republicans either. We want to have that uh, traditional understanding of what conservatism is about. Have you looked at all into uh, um, Don Blankenship? He's running on the, the Constitutionalist Party, or the Constitution Party. Yeah. Um, but they're not on the ballot in New York State, and I don't even know if they made it on the ballot in enough states to theoretically have a have a chance of getting the electoral votes. But I listened to an interview he was on with Larry Sharp, um, and, and Sharp's good about you know bringing in folks like that, and I really liked what, what Blankenship had to say. 
Yeah, I would go Constitution Party. In fact, one year they were on the New York ballot and I mm -hmm. voted that way. And one year I wrote it in. Yeah. I can't remember who the candidate was. It might have been Baldwin. Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that one time because I just could not pull the lever for George Bush or John McCain or uh, Romney. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I hear you. And, and you know, the way I see this going is that it, if Trump doesn't win this time or say he does and finishes out four years, um, especially if he if he loses this election, I don't see the Republicans staying with that outsider um, mentality. I think they'll go right back to the centrist that my prediction would be the next cycle if they lose this jeb bush will be their nominee they'll oh. go right back to that squishy centrist philosophy unfortunately and two you go to that philosophy it just seems like there's more warmongering that happens a lot of a lot of hawks in that yeah lane. i'm sorry you saw it with george senior you saw it with uh uh george uh gw and uh you saw it, uh, I think, in the uh, platform or the way in which McCain would discuss foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Like you say, there's war hawks there, and I don't want any more war. No. That's the thing, you know, is, as a Christian, I go down the line of, of, of the law, you know, the Ten Commandments, and I see so many being violated by our huge government now, regardless of who's in power. And, you know, these useless wars are by proxy violating uh, thou shall not murder. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, a couple weeks ago, uh, during your message in, in church, I mean, you came really close to saying taxation is theft, which is our libertarian <laughs> mantra, but that's the biggest one besides idolatry, yeah. which is what we've built this whole government system into as a giant idol. And then we all have to fight every four years of who gets to stand on top of that idol in terms of the two major parties. Um, I, I think the, the theft one is probably the most violated besides idolatry. Oh, I agree. And I'm very clear about uh, saying taxation is theft because the way it's done now with this progressive income tax, and I feel the way it's done now with property tax, it steals what people uh, own. And I just cannot buy into a system where if you own property, you have to pay rent to the government. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see those third parties, especially those freedom-minded third parties, have uh, more pull and sway as to what's done in Albany as well as in Washington. Well, with that said, I found something that I was totally frustrated with. I mean, as much as I'm thinking of conservative Republicans that are voting for Biden as oxymoronic, yet even more oxymoronic is seeing evangelicals vote for Biden. Oh, yeah. That just blows my mind. Yep. Uh, how can you do that? And to say you're pro-life voting for Biden. Yeah, I was going to say the, the murder by proxy via, via useless foreign wars is, is one bad thing. But our government under, you know, both parties, but at least the Republicans speak lip service to pro-life where the Democrats don't even don't even try. I mean, that's that's just murder, not by proxy. That's direct. Yeah. And why is a Democrat who claims to be pro-life in the Democrat Party? Because they don't have a voice uh, whatso whatsoever. And two, it was interesting reading an article by John Piper, uh, really well-known pastor throughout the United States, saying that he is not voting for Biden, of course, but he's not voting for Trump. Uh, and I can understand that point of view. For example, like you're voting libertarian. I can understand that as a Christian, though I wish libertarians were more uh, anti-abortion. Mm -hmm, uh, but uh, I can understand that vote. What I can't understand are evangelicals who say they're pro-life, anti-abortion, voting for Joe Biden. So did Piper declare who he was going to vote for? He just said none, neither of the two major parties? None of the two, uh, but it seemed to suggest that he's going to vote for a third-party candidate, but didn't say explicitly. I'd be interested to see if he, like, reveals that. I know, you know? it will be. Where is his citizenship in the U.S.? I think he's from Minnesota. Okay, and I don't know what their 
Are they a swing or are they? They could be. Yeah, I think they're. In they're, the, they're I think they're, they've been shifting over yeah, the years. I so, think they're in the ballpark um, this election. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting because you know it, if you really understand how the electoral college works in the in the voting demographics of your state, sometimes it's it's easy you know to vote for a third party mm-hmm. even if you really don't want one of the other ma- major parties to win. Like you know I. Out of the two, gun to my head, it's it's an easy decision. Like Trump is going to be better on the issues that that I care about, at least on paper. Um, maybe not as as much on on practice. Uh, but yeah, it, it'd be interesting to get someone's perspective perspective in a swing state. You know, in a similar situation. That right, I right. And Piper said he couldn't vote for Trump because basically of his character. Yeah, uh, I his character that. was so flawed that he's uh, boastful, he's facetious, he insults people. But it's interesting, a theologian, Wayne Gruden, took him to task in a very polite way. And he set forth three points that I'd just like to mention. And Gruden said this, there is a difference between the personal influence of a leader's personal example, which may be rejected, but laws compel obedience. In other words, he's saying, if you have Biden in there and Harris, they are going to strangle religious freedom. What about those corporations that operate by a Christian principle regarding the aspect of abortion in healthcare? Uh, Like we saw with Hobby Lobby. Having Biden and Harris, they'll want to force corporations to abide by what the government tells them to do. And I think that's a good point that Gruden made. Yeah, we're not here advocating for Trump's character like some of these evangelicals are highlighting Biden's character. I mean, come on, Biden and character, that doesn't go together all that great. And uh, they, his isn't as elevated as they might think above uh, Donald Trump. But even so, what Gruden says, uh, you got to know the difference between a leader's personal example that may be rejected and consider what laws would compel obedience. And I feel like Trump has done a great job in removing regulations and want to see that continue. Yeah, I think so to some extent. But it's for me, it's not just about his personality. I think it's it's a lot of his policy and a lot of what he hasn't delivered that he's he's talked up on. Um, the Heritage Foundation put out a neat study in terms of the funding and the number of abortions that Planned Parenthood has performed, and it's gone up significantly under Trump's administration. But that's not, I mean, it is Trump's fault, but here's how it happens. It's bipartisan cooperation on giant spending bills, where the Republicans say, oh, you know, I'm pro-life, but I'm also pro Pentagon and I'm also pro, you know, raises for congressmen. So it's a give and take and this is what bipartisanship gives you is a giant omnibus spending bill with these compromises in it. And of course Trump is the last man. He's the right. gatekeeper. <laughs> and I mean maybe he didn't I'm sure he didn't read it all, but you know, someone <laughs> may have or should have told him that, hey, this includes increase in funding for Planned Parenthood, just so you know that. <laughs> Whether he knew it or not, he, he signed the bill, which led to more money out of our pockets into their coffers and, and more deaths of unborn babies. So See, That's why I really can't fault libertarians so much because they do have a strong uh, pro-choice element in that uh, party. But I feel like they would remove the spending you're talking about. Yeah, and there is a growing um, pro-life force in that party. Um, the Mises Caucus, after mm-hmm. Ludwig von Mises. Um, these are folks like uh, Tom Woods, who is an understudy of Ron Paul. I don't know if you've ever read Lawrence Vance, Lou Rockwell. These are all um, guys that are in that movement. And, you know, they extend those personal liberties not just to people outside of the womb, but all the way through from, from conception to death. And the fact that, you know, it's not right for for the government to collect your wealth and spend it on all these things, especially things like abortion and like 
um, overseas wars and aid to countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran, who we should really have nothing to do with. <laughs> I totally agree with you there to return to a foreign policy that our first president you know, would discuss, take care of our own, uh, think about our own borders, and stay away from getting involved in other people's affairs in nations across the ocean. Yeah, I mean, we're always going to need a strong intelligence, and that's yep. one thing that I, I think I would keep with a limited government um, and, and hopefully find a way to fund that through sales tax or sin tax or something more voluntary that, that could go out there and just keep an eye on the rest of the world, yep. but not necessarily poke the hornet's nest or, or go over there and, and, and actively get involved in somebody else's fight. And I really have two problems with military bases mm -hmm. uh, being placed in a country like Iraq. Yeah. What for? But anyway, Gruden also said, uh, in response to John Piper, political policies are not, in general, more important than personal character, but they are a primary factor to consider. Uh, so policies are important. I know there's the issue of personal uh, character, but it gave a perspective in regards to a response to what John Piper was saying in that Trump's character is so bad, we cannot elect him as president. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I see that. Um, I just think that uh, no matter who it is, Trump or, or the Democratic nominee, you know, they, they all want the power. And they all, like I said, they all want to be the ones standing on top of that idol. I think, you know, our party is the only one that wants to break that idol yeah. down. Like yeah. we don't we don't want to stand on it. And um, a, a friend of mine shared a, a verse today and just happened to come right before I left. Um, Judges 8, the story of, 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 of Gideon after he defeated the Midianites and the, the Israeli leader said, we want you to lead us. We want, you know, you to rule over us. He said, I'm not going to rule over you. My son's not going to rule over you. The Lord's going to rule <laughs> over you. But he also followed up or someone in the comments posted the uh, middle of Judges 9, where the different trees are trying basically to convince each other of, oh, the fig tree, you should lead us. Oh, the olive tree, you should lead us. And they all, they all declined until it got down to the brambles. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was poignant to, um, you know, our, our, our political scene. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that, that keeps me with the, the liberty movement is that, you know, we don't, we don't want to rule over anybody. You know, we want people to hopefully let the Lord rule over them or at least give them, you know, the choice to do that. Hopefully they decide to do that. If they don't, hopefully they lead, lead their sinful lives without, you know, harming anyone else. You know, when they cross that line, that's, that's when whoever bears the sword brings the hammer down or gets the millstones out. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, one other point that Gruden said, he said, Christians who support Trump do not encourage imitation of his flaws. And I think that was a very good point to make because as we uh, will pull the lever for him, we are also saying he needs to clean up his act when it comes to what he tweets and the kind of language that he will use from uh, time to time. And one other thing he mentioned, and I would agree with him, I have a more positive evaluation of Trump's character than John Piper does. <laughs> uh, I mean, Trump has admitted to uh, affairs and, you know, wrecked marriages, but I look at him conducting himself now as president, and he's representative of what a man should be like to his wife as he's been in the presidency. So I would agree with Grudem on that point. Any comment about those last two points? That yeah, I mean, I Piper hope made. so. Um, I would like to see, you know, Christian Republicans hold Trump's feet to the fire a, a little bit more um, than they have. Uh, for the four years that he's been there, I, I've seen a little bit of improvement in his character, um, but I don't think we should be afraid as, as Christians, regardless of our Trump supporters, not to you know, to call him out when he is um, acting unkind or of, of poor character.
Yeah, uh, and I know a group of us pastors one time said he just needs somebody to speak into his life. And we don't know if that would be Mike Pence or somebody there. I was it there. would be Pence, you know, because yeah. Pence is a, is a good Christian and a good, yeah. good man of high character, it seems like. And it's interesting. David Kupulian wrote an article for World Net Daily saying it's more than just voting for the president. Think about who you're going to put in as vice president. I definitely want Pence above Harris any day. Yeah. Uh, Pence, I think, is a quality individual uh, and a saved uh, person, a uh, Christian. And then not only that, but all the appointments as well that will go into that executive branch, though I think we could do without three quarters of it. Still, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is appointments there that will be significant. So with that said, uh, this is our edition for the Sophie Scholl Society before you go to the ballot box on Tuesday. Glad you were with us here on this edition of Sophie Scholl.